Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the next episode of Joe Kelly's Psychedelic Experience. What's going on with you, my friend? Your old pal Joe here, checking in with you on a motherfucking Monday. Well, how's it going? How's it hanging? What's going on with you, my friend? Listen, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing better than you ever thought you possibly could be doing. And if you are not, that is A-OK, but get your shit together. What the fuck else have you been doing? The aliens are coming. They're blowing up whole cities with toxic gas now. They're uh, satanic rituals left and right at the Emmys, the Grammys, the Super Bowl. It's all falling apart, people. So what the fuck else are you going to do besides not, besides get your shit together? I almost said not get your shit together. Don't fucking get it the fuck together, people. It's all coming to an end. You might as well have it together. For yourself, for yourself, if not for anybody else, fuck them, do it for you, that's all that matters. Listen, before we get into the nitty gritty of the things, before we got the upcoming dates, people, I started a Discord, in case y'all want to come hang out in the Discord, and we can uh, all chit chat over there a little bit more, and maybe form more of a community than just a podcast, we can, you know... Go check it out. There's a link in the description. I don't fucking know what the point is, but it seems like if you knuckleheads are going to be out there wandering around by yourselves, you might as well fucking wander over to Discord. We can all wander around together from time to time. You know what I mean? Building a community over on Discord. So there's a link. Come say hey, and we'll have all sorts of fun over there. I'm not sure what the purpose is of it, but it seems like it's a good thing to be having for us to... Hang out together, I guess. I don't fucking know. We'll see what happens with it. Got some shows coming up this week's my this week's this week, my friend. Big show this Saturday, February 25th in Flint, Michigan. I'll be at Timothy's Pub, the big homecoming show. It'll be fantastic. The water will be flowing. You know what I mean? We'll be drinking it on the rock, straight from the tap, any which way. It's a party. It's a party. Also, the 24th, the day before, I'll be in Memphis, Michigan. Not Tennessee, Michigan at uh, Bell River Golf Course. So come through there. March, we got some dates with the great Aaron Weber. We'll be in Lowell, Arkansas, the 10th through the 11th at Helium Comedy Club in St. Louis, the 17th and 18th with Aaron Weber. The 19th, I'll be in St. Louis on my own at the Funny Bone, closing the show out there. So, if you don't want to see the clean shows at Helium, come through the Funny Bone. I'll be doing another set while I'm in town that weekend. Coming up at the end of March, the 31st and the 1st of April, Syracuse, New York. That is also with my buddy Aaron Weber. I'll be in Austin, Texas at the Creek in the Cave for the Dirty Show or the Filthy Show, I believe what it's what it's called, on uh, Saturday. April 15th. I'll also be back with Aaron Weber at the end of April in Indiana somewhere in Columbus, Ohio, some dates in Kentucky in May. Go to joekellycomedy.com for all the upcoming shows. We're adding more, bigger things are happening in the world, people. You know, we just keep moving on. Dates keep getting added. Shows keep coming. More balloons, balloons left and right, balloons as far as the eye can see now. And they keep popping up, and it's just all sorts of good, positive things. But how have you been, my friend? How was your weekend? What would you get into last week? Did you have any fun at all? Did anything enjoyable happen, or was it just, just disaster after disaster after disaster? As if it would uh, seem that way. Let's talk about the train derailments that seem to keep happening. Here's the thing about the trains, all right? Everyone's like, oh, there's a bunch of trains derailing. Apparently, there are thousands of train derailments every single year. So multiple per day happen in America. But now it is a big deal uh, for some reason. Usually, I don't think most of the uh, derailments in the past have resulted in uh, chemical explosions. You know what I mean? For lack of a better word. Well, what the fuck is going on? Is the train thing bad? Because it does seem like it's like, oh, it's happening almost everywhere now, or there have been a bunch, but then I read there's like, oh, there's thousands that happen every year. So maybe we shouldn't worry about it. Or is it just this constant feeding of bad news over and over that just makes us think things are bad, even though it's just how, it's just how it's always been. Trains fall off the tracks. 
We don't, you know, we fucking blow up cities. We don't care about it. It happens every single day. And we never thought it would come to East Palestine, though, did we? You'd think with that kind of name, there would be some ruckus going on anyway. So, you know, you can't be, uh, <laughs> you know, they're like the water's bad in Ohio now. It's like, yeah, fucking welcome to Flint. You know, it's been the same thing that's been going on for years in different places. And now it's just a big news story because I don't really know. I've, You know, you feel bad for the people in Ohio because the train and the chemicals and all that bad shit. What is the, this was a, I'll share this news article real quick. I thought this was pretty interesting. We'll get into some different stuff later, people. This was a, China's kind of response to how the whole Ohio thing has been handled. And uh, it's not looking good, people. It's not looking good. It's not looking like we're very respectable uh, in uh, in a, in America anymore. Anyway, I'll read this to you, then we'll get into a little bit of fun. China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs on Friday ridiculed the Biden administration for focusing its energies on harmless objects in U.S. airspace, but playing down the giant chemical fire in Ohio that has thousands of residents worried about the long ter- about long term health consequences. So even China's going, hey, you guys are worried about balloons. Meanwhile, uh, you're gassing uh, your own people. (laughs) And it's like, where are your fucking values lying? What are you worried about? Are we at the point where we're just scared of our own shadow people? Is that what's going on? Is that what is happening? Who the fuck knows? The spokesperson for the ministry, uh, Wang Winbin, it's not racist if you just have trouble pronouncing the names, was asked to respond to a claim from the White House that China was deflecting from the spy balloon incident by sanctioning U.S. companies this week. In response, Wang accused the Biden administration of continuing to focus on China, even at the expense of the health of its own citizens. Speaking of deflecting, can the U.S. tell us why it is able to see the balloon 18,000 meters above the ground, but seems to have been blind to the toxic mushroom cloud of vinyl chloride over Ohio. The Chinese fella said. (laughs) Anyway, I think the whole point of it is, is they're going, you guys are worried about balloons and you don't even notice or you don't even seem to really care about what the fuck is actually going on in your own country, which is a bad sign. You know, I mean, that has, I think that's been the case for a long time. That's, uh, you know, we got bigger issues to fucking worry about and all this and that shit, you know, we'll stop a football game when a football player is hurt. But when cities are getting blown up and there's shootings at schools again, nobody, you know, we keep the fucking, NBA keeps playing. Everything else keeps going on as normal. It's very interesting. I just found that fascinating because it seemed like a bunch of bad shit happened. Super Bowl was this past Sunday, correct? Isn't that, wasn't that the thing that happened? Couldn't fucking, you know, you got a city that's blown up, people getting poisoned. We couldn't possibly stop a football game for that. No, we got to stop it for this guy who's playing the fucking game, you know? And I'm like, listen, I think the game should, the show must go on either way, right? But it's interesting how the mass, the hive mind will fucking stop everything in the world, stop their entire existence and become a good person for when a celebrity or high profile athlete has something bad happen to them. But when it's a whole town of people and no one gives a fuck Ohio, Or some kids at fucking Michigan State University. I was like, I will keep, yeah, listen, there's a gun. There's a fucking bandit at large on campus shooting kids. Fucking shoot a three, dude. (laughs) That's what everything that happened this past week. More trails derailed. Everything's fucking falling into a bit of chaos, which I believe is the end of every empire, my friends. You know, it's all out in the open. It's all happening around us. We have access to all the information. You can see the signs of the empire failing. And uh, we just keep going on as normal for some reason or pretending to be as normal as we possibly can, which I think is resulting in absolute insanity amongst the whole population. And everyone's just acting fucking bizarre and hedonistic, you know. That seems to be what's going. Well, what the fuck do I know? I don't know anything. Maybe everything's normal and fine as if uh, as if they'd want you to think it should be. 
everything is fine in general. You know, what the fuck are you supposed to do? You're supposed to be concerned about everything and everyone in the whole fucking planet, or you just worry about yourself and what's going on around you. I vote for the latter, but it is difficult to get away from all the other bullshit and nonsense. You guys get it. You guys understand what the fuck, you know, bunch of bullshit you can't control that just gets force fed to you. And then the stuff that seems really bad is you never really hear about it. (laughs) We're too worried about balloons and UFOs and all this and that shit. And it's like, oh, man, what what are we supposed to do anyway? What are you going to do when they say there's an alien or an alien? You see one on TV or the Internet and not like a. You know, not some fake video from, you know, Mexico where they see a fucking gnome in a tree or whatever it is. But you see something that's like CNN comes on the air and they're like, this is an actual, we have alien contact. This is not a drill. This is the actual news. What are you going to do? How are you going to react? You know what I mean? Is everyone going to freak out? Is that is that what is going to happen? You know, will there be a shot to prevent alien invasion in your hometown maybe you get something like that what are you going to do because that's going to have to happen at some point in time in the near future right it seems like all the pieces of the puzzle are getting set in place to whether or not it's true to announce the alien invasion so even if there is even if it does happen what the fuck is anybody going to do you're going to freak out you're just going to start going crazy and fucking shooting people they did a twilight zone episode on this years ago like the monster is on main street or whatever and basically it was just i think more or less the government just took over people's radios and like the weather (laughs) which doesn't seem like a completely impossible thing to do and they just started fucking with this town going oh there's an alien in the town nobody knows who it is but it could be you, it could be your neighbor, all this, that, and the other. And it, everybody in the small town just started turning on each other just because they thought they started to believe that somebody was an alien. You know? So then was everyone just going to fucking be, you know, concerned about everybody? You should have been. We should have been doing that years ago instead of trusting these monsters to fucking run the country and run the world. Now it's too late to figure out where the monsters and the aliens are. Because they're the ones in charge of telling you where they're at. <laughs> and they're not going to help you find them. Anyway, that Twilight Zone episode is great. Y'all should check it out uh, sometime. You know, it's a good one. It's very, it, it seems to be what is happening in the world today. You know, people just don't know what to do. And again, that's the sign of an empire coming to an end. Where there's no real external threat. So the people just turn on each other for nonsensical reasons and then fall from the inside which is what we're doing (laughs) maybe we're not maybe it's just that just happening on the internet i don't know i don't see people get along too much oh people fuck i almost forgot to tell you my neighbors got arrested (laughs) there was a police standoff in my front yard for fucking like four or five hours the other day I'm in my little office, I'm in the fucking, you know, in the den, in the studio, in the man cave, whatever the fuck you want to call it. For those of you listening, my sunglasses just came off, in case you want to make a time stamp and go watch this. (laughs) Well, my neighbors, they fucking, both of them on the left and the right, both got arrested. I was just, yeah, sitting here doing my work and all this, and I just hear, uh, we know you're in there, come out. And I'm like, wait, is that something coming through the video start playing? Like, what the fuck is going on? And uh, I look out the window, there's just cops there, like fucking three undercover vehicles, like three marked vehicles, whatever, fucking set up a sting. I don't know what the fuck was going on, but my neighbors were arrested. (laughs) They're out there for hours just trying to negotiate two families with fucking... uh, Minivans full of kids, a bunch of kids. You probably shouldn't have brought the kids to it, but a lot of kids, a lot of children. Uh, you know, then at some point, hours have gone by. Nobody's really doing anything. Uh, 
they all tried to make a run for it individually and they all got caught. There were three of them <laughs> watching this unfold. It's like, what the fuck chaos did I move into? You know, maybe that's why you pay 1600 a bucks a month to live in a shitty one bedroom in Nashville. So you don't have fucking crime scenes going down in your front yard. I didn't know I was getting into this, but it is what it is, but it's been pretty peaceful the past few days. <laughs> But we'll see how long that happens. It was just chaos, man. And I don't know so many kids, so many fucking kids. And it's like, you, this is what you want to, maybe you have to, I guess, if you're fucking driving from the store to home and someone's like, hey, shit's going down. You just fucking go. But either way, man, what the fuck? Absolute chaos, absolute insanity. But it should be quiet for a couple of weeks. That's the neighbor update. I should have given that up top before I spiraled into the fucking whatever I was talking about. You know, all the nonsense I fucking, what I fucking do. I've been very quiet. I've never seen something like that before up front. We used to get the cops called on us. One of our neighbors growing up, uh, I knew I grew up around a lot of kids getting raised by their grandparents, by the way. <laughs> I don't know what that has to do with anything, but I think it has a lot to do with a lot of things, to be honest with you. I realized that the other day, you know, I was like, oh, that, those are the most, most of the people I grew up with were people getting raised by their grandparents for some reason. But we had a kid across the street. His name was Jeremy. Uh, you know, he had a, a lot of, a lot of issues, man. He's, a, he's dead now. He did that to himself, but growing up, you could just like see it coming. Had emotional issues, shit like that. Uh, the cops, we called on him quite a bit. We had a police scanner too. We Listen, I knew a lot of kids who got raised by the grandparents and we had a police scanner. So it probably says a lot about the way I grew up as far as like, oh, this is not, this isn't so we can, you know, be good citizens. This is for entertainment purposes. Okay. This is for when Jeremy flips out, we want to hear what's going on. That's pretty much what it was, but the cops get called on him from time to time, but it was never like, I didn't see anybody get chased and it was never like a, a four hour fucking sting operation where it's like, they aren't leaving. They towed the dude's car too, while he was still in the house. It was like, Oh man, they're bringing out all the guns for whatever reason. I don't know what happened. You know, but then they took off running and it's like there's a bunch of kids around. No one got shot. That was good. You know, that was fucking good. And it's like, oh, this is just chaos and this is bad. This is all bad news. But I've just never seen anything quite like that close up. What an interesting fucking experience. I'm sure a lot of those kids are getting raised by their grandparents, too. <laughs> So hopefully it works out for them because it didn't work out for old Jeremy, unfortunately, you know, he was, he was like my first friend. We were never really that good of friends, but it's like looking back, it was like, oh, he just has emotional problems and his parents aren't around to raise him and his grandparents are very old and ornery people. So they're going to be very aggressive. So of course he's going to be all fucking emotionally all fucked up, you know, but it is what it is. R.I.P. Jeremy. Hope you're doing well. My friend, wherever you are, hope you get it figured out at some point in time, you know? Didn't mean for that to become a bummer. I was just going, oh, my neighbors got arrested. That was a fun one. But uh, what is it? What else would I want to talk about? Oh, more about like the news shit anyway. It's just, uh, I was just thinking about the aliens because everyone keeps talking about the UFOs and shit like that. And we're just, uh, no one seems to believe anything anymore. Or no one knows what to believe. People will believe things, but there's like so many other options. You know what I mean? It's like, if there is, a, going back to the alien thing, if there's an alien invasion, or if they say there is one, are you going to believe that there's an actual one? Are you going to believe that they're just saying it? Are you going to believe that the government may have something to do with it? You know, it's no one knows what to believe. And even if even if you were told the truth at this point, I don't think most people would believe it, depending from what source it comes from. But what kind of mental psychosis is going on right now 
where no one, no one seems to believe anything. And anyone that does believe like everything, anyone that's towing that line, I think most of us go, you're the fucking most crazy person in the world to just buy the hook, line, and sinker story and go, oh, nothing's going on. Everything, trains, they just blow up for no reason and no one says anything. That's what happens, you know what I mean? And we're just shooting down weather balloons. Nothing really bad is happening. And we're just supporting Ukraine. That's all that's going on over there. It's not a fucking, uh, it's not a long thought out fucking chess move that we've been trying to fucking put our hands on for years. It has nothing to do with that. It's all just helping people. And we care about the environment and starving kids as long as they're not looking all sexy on an island. You know, you could be starving to death somewhere, but don't be on an island looking all sexy if you're a child. We don't care. (laughs) Just buying all the horse shit. Those people are out of their fucking minds, you know? But even just regular, just regular jack off people, no one knows what to think about anything. Nothing makes any sense. And is that all part of the plan or did that happen by accident? Is it just the flood of information that we have access to? Uh, Did that create the confusion or the lack of trust? Or is it just the, the exposure to the information of the Internet made a lot of people realize that most things we're told is a lie. I think maybe that has more to do with the distrust than anything else. And it's like, what do you, do you want to, uh, are you okay living in a lie? I guess that's a, a question you have to pose yourself. And if you are fucking mind your business and keep, enjoy the fucking, you know, enjoy the pretzel sticks and melted cheese dips and just keep wandering through the shit. If you're okay being lied to, as long as you don't want your boat rattled. But I guess to accept that you're being lied to, you have to understand that that's going to rattle your boat a little bit and go, fuck, man, everything's been a lie this whole goddamn time. And they're like, well, not everything. And they go, what hasn't been? And they're like, ah, pretty much everything. Sorry. (laughs) It's just uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to accept that, uh, to just realize, I think, that you've been lied to and you can't trust any, you know, anyone who has an agenda or anyone who has, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Anything invested in how you behave, I guess. You can't trust them because everyone's trying to get you to behave a certain way, and it's usually to make money, you know? But what do you do? How do you start integrating integrating truth into our daily existence now? Because you can't be done. It's not like everyone can come out and go, okay, listen, we have been, this is all just a, a fucking mind game we've been playing with everybody We just feed people bullshit so they buy Coca-Cola and Doritos. And the the truth is nobody really knows what's going on. We're all scared and money's not real. We don't make anything in this country anymore. So we're more of an, we're viewed as more of an expense than anything else. We're not very uh, ingenuitive. We're not creative. We don't produce anything anymore. So as far as looking at the country like a business, the higher ups see most of the people as being expendable. And if you weren't expendable, we might keep you around and just try to lie to you in a different way. <laughs> I feel like that would be, you can't, you can't tell people that, you know what I mean? Cause that's, what's going on. Nobody cares. The American guy, the government doesn't care about the people cause they aren't, they don't do anything, but be a big fat pain in the ass and sit around and want money and food shoved in their mouth, you know, and that's on us. We're not making, we're not, we're not presenting ourselves as valuable citizens because we've been promised everything and we don't really want to work that hard, which I get. Why wouldn't you want to work hard? It's all your money is going to go to taxes. They're going to fund wars and a bunch of shit that you don't fucking get to reap benefits of anyway. But we're expendable. We're an expendable people to the, the leaders of this great nation at this point in time, you know? Because they don't, they don't listen to us. Our votes really don't matter. Uh, again, we don't, we don't uh, produce anything to bring in money from the rest of the world, you know? Uh, so what do, we, what do we do? If you were in charge, if you owned a company and... Everybody who worked for you did nothing and just kept wanting more stuff and more money and more cheese. What would you, what would you do? Would you feed them so much cheese that they died earlier? 
Would that be a fucking, would that be a move? Just trying to think about the country from a business standpoint and why nobody seems to give a fuck about people in Ohio. And it's because people in Ohio don't do shit for anybody else. (laughs) But that can be said about anybody, you know, (laughs) in the whole country. Who's the most valuable to the U.S. government right now? What are valuable companies? Tesla, fucking Amazon, those type of digital fucking companies. But everyone else, we don't produce, we don't make nothing. We're not, we're not generating income to the business that is America. So I'm not surprised they don't give a fuck about us or just feed us lies. You know, that's on us. We got to step up our game. We got to start making microprocessors for real cheap people. Pennies on the dollar. <laughs> Bro, I don't even know what the fuck I've been talking about today. I'm just rambling through shit. I don't really know what's going on. It's been a slow week. Haven't really done comedy. Just been kind of absorbing the news. I got to I think I got to stop doing that. It doesn't seem good. It doesn't seem like it's a healthy thing to do. And also, it's like I'm in the situation where I don't know what I don't believe. I wouldn't believe the truth if you told it to me and showed it to me and put it out in my front yard at this point, depending who it's coming from, you know? But what do you do? You try and fucking just make sure you got your shit in order and taking care of yourself. It's going to be the next 10 years is going to be interesting, man. Nobody talks about retirement funds or anything anymore, you know? I haven't heard anybody talk about Medicaid or Medicare in a while. It's like, oh, man, dark days are ahead, people. Be forewarned. The fucking uh, the waves are going to get rocky. It's going to be some dark days in our near future, I feel like. Everyone thinks now is pretty bad. Just wait. Just wait and see. <laughs> We're on our way out. It's all falling apart. But again, is it not? Has it always been this way? We've lived, we live in a constant state of chaos. And now it's just more, you used to, it used to fucking take 38 days for you to get the news of the chaos, you know, coming from Ohio, coming from buttfuck Ohio when you live in goddamn Tennessee. But now it's instantaneous, you know? It used to take fucking years. It'd take you two months in a in a fucking donkey to get the news from fucking Ohio when you lived in Tennessee. But now it's just immediate and you feel like you're you're involved in Ohio somehow, even though you don't give a fuck about Ohio. You just think that people should be doing more for the people in Ohio than they do for other people fucking who don't give a shit about what happens in this country, you know? Because oh, people from Ohio are good fucking people. Grain of the salt, fucking people from Ohio. I do know that. I've had some great times at Ohio. Fucking auto industry state. You know what I mean? They've been fucked over so many times. They look like uh, fucking Pamela Anderson after the fourth season of Baywatch. You know what I mean? Oh, it's, they've been through tough times. That's all I'm trying to say. They've had ups. They've had downs. They've been down a lot. They've been kicked in the teeth. Nobody gives a fuck about Ohio ever. And then they fucking nuke a goddamn town. And then there's people going, how come no one cares about Ohio now? It's because we never gave a shit about Ohio. Except for when LeBron James was there. That's the only thing. That's the only time people gave a shit about anything that was going on in Ohio. Was when LeBron James was fucking playing his basketball there, or when the fucking when they set off a nuclear fucking train. <laughs> Those have been the only two times you hear about from fucking goddamn stinky ass Ohio. But they deserve better respect, you know. Somebody should be out there going, "What the fuck's going on?" Instead of going, "Oh, the water is fine. You can drink it. You'll be fine." <sighs> It's just, it's madness. Absolute madness and chaos. It's all chaos, folks. What do we do? What do we do? We just try and enjoy ourselves. Take a walk in the morning. Sit down. Think about the things you appreciate in life. And, uh, you know, get it, get your ducks in order. Get your ducks in order. Get some chickens. That's my, that's what I just keep telling everybody. Get a couple solar panels and a couple of chickens. And you'll be fine until they fucking breathe in that gas you know or they get uh you know that other virus thing that then slowly kills everybody but didn't do that good of a job 
I watched some Terrence McKenna video last week. If you guys don't know who Terrence McKenna is, this podcast has been fucking a wonky one. <laughs> Terrence McKenna, he's a botanist. He is dead. He was a great author. I loved him very much. He gave um, great words of wisdom, big into psychedelics. I found some speech of him where he was giving an interview of some kind, and he was just talking about times just continuous, continuing to get stranger and stranger, and the hypocrisy is going to continue to grow until there's nothing but hypocrisy left, basically. And uh, it's just fascinating. It just seems like he hit the nail on the head and just had a vision for the future that most people, I think most people, if you sit and you think about it, you, you could figure out where the world is going to go. But instead, we'd rather swipe up on another video and watch, you know, someone get arrested at a fucking gas station for stealing a bag of pretzels. But uh, I'll play the clip because Terrence will give it more. Uh, it'll make it more poetic than I could have ever. But I'll play that at the end of the podcast. I'll get the audio for it and add it on for you. But let's get you the fucking animal video clip of the week and get you out of here, my friends. All right. I hope we had a little bit of fun. I hope we had some good times. I hope we learned something. Don't forget to come over to Discord and we can all talk and be friendly together. All right. We're starting a, a, a movement. A fucking uh, what's the thing? A militia, if you will. A militia of the mind, all right? You guys get it. Animal video clip of the week gets you on your fucking way. Uh, this video, I can't remember if I talked about this before. I feel like I have. This is an old, a little bit of an older video. But it's people at a pier, you know, a pier where the fucking ocean is. What happens at the ocean? A lot of the fucking critters start mixing and mingling. You know, you got fucking birds. You got land animals. Fucking, you know crabs and all that shit you got the birds the sky animals then you got the fish you got the fish animals and then you got some that do both then you got some like a like a seal that's in the water sometimes and sometimes out of the water so a lot of crazy stuff happens at the ocean you know a lot of life evolving and mixing and going oh, i can only breathe water oh i can only breathe air it's like well i breathe air but i still i vibe out in the water you know <laughs> but people are trying to feed the seal a fish, an old dead smelly fish. And the seal's like, all right, I've done the clap. I've patted my belly. I'm about to get me this fucking, uh, this piece of fish here. And they throw the fish in the water. Seal goes to get it. And a seagull swoops in and fucking snags up the fish, you know, right in front of the seal. And now you'd think this seal is just a seal, they're the uh, land, the sea puppies, right? They're the fucking dogs of the ocean. You think that this fucking seal would just go, oh, that sucks, my fucking fish. Oh, well, I guess there's probably another one. Uh, the seal did not, he's not a bitch, you know? It was an alpha seal. What the seal did was rather than, rather than getting mad about the fish being gone, he decided to just attack and kill the seagull, which was pretty gnarly. You know, he grabbed the seagull by its neck, went underwater, popped up with the fucking seagull in its mouth. It shook its head like how a uh, how a Doberman pincher would uh, get a hold of a snake. If you've ever seen a dog grab a snake and shakes it around till it snaps in half, that's what this fucking seal did with the uh, the seagull. Which incredible video! I didn't know seals would do that; would be so aggressive because it wasn't like. He didn't eat the seagull afterwards. It was strictly a revenge type scenario where it's like, oh, you stole my fish. I'm going to kill you now. And while I think there's a bigger message in this video, while the fish may not seem like a lot to the seal, sometimes it might be the only thing the seal has. So we need to keep that in mind from the seagull's point of view. You know, maybe we are hungry. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe we do deserve something but maybe somebody else deserves it more maybe somebody else is hungrier you know and maybe if they're not even hungry maybe they just don't like being fucked with it will decapitate you if you fuck with them just something to keep in mind a little food for thought you know when you see a fish floating out there and it's not for you fucking let that stinky thing float dude if not it's going to come back to bite you and you're going to get your head chopped off Simple facts of life here on the podcast this week, friends. Simple fucking facts of life.
Be careful out there. Don't breathe in the air in Ohio. And by God, you don't fuck around with bad, bad Leroy Seal. Hey, show's coming up this week. The 24th, I'll be at Bell River Golf Course in Memphis, Michigan. The big show, Saturday, tw- the 25th of February, Timothy's Pub. That's in Flint, Michigan. I'll be in Arkansas, Missouri, as well as New York, all next month in March. And then I'm going to be in Austin, as well as Indiana and Columbus, Ohio. I'll be coming to Columbus, Ohio towards the end of April. Go to joekellycomedy.com for all the upcoming dates and shenanigans and happenings that are going on. Don't forget to join the Discord. Come say hey. It's free. I don't know how to fucking how I would charge anybody money just to come fucking talk a bunch of stupid ass shit. But come on through. Come say hey. Share your fucking videos and whatever we got going on over there. Just gonna be a fun place to chit chat from time to time. And you know maybe we develop a big enough group that where we start fucking making swings in the stock market. You know what I mean? It becomes one of those Discord types where we pump and then we dump. You know what I mean? And then we all get cash, money, Rolexes, cars, and bitches. I think that's the future for the Discord. So you better join. Do me a favor. (laughs) Take care of yourself and take care of somebody else. I'll catch you around real fucking soon. Later, my friend. YouTube, what's happening? What's up with you? Special bonus portion of the podcast for you. You guys are the best. I don't know if you know this. I don't know if I say it enough. I don't know if reminding you at the end of every single podcast, every single week that you are the best and I love you is enough. But by God, I only have so much to offer. But this is, I think, the best part of the podcast. The end of it. (laughs) But I love you. Join the Discord, say hey on YouTube. I think you can subscribe to my channel for some reason. I'm going to just keep trying to post more stuff. I need to get an editor. I need to get a video person to help me out. In case you are a video editor yourself and you want to fucking, you want some work and to chop up clips and shit like that, let me know. I'd be happy to fucking hire some people. I got to produce, I got more shit going on trying to fucking tame this beast that we've been creating for the past fucking 10 years, mainly the past two years on the podcast. You know what I mean? We're doing big things, people. I'm being fucking a little bit vague right now. Yeah, you bet your ass I am. So stay the fuck tuned. You know what I mean? (laughs) I love (laughs) you. I'm a fucking idiot. I love you. (laughs) Novelty is not necessarily good or nice. Novelty is complex. That's what it is. And so I see really a concatenation of uh, tendencies and uh, forces here at the end. It's only going to get weirder. The level of contradiction is going to rise excruciatingly, even beyond the excruciating present levels of contradiction. (laughs) So... uh, Uh, I think it's just going to get weirder and weirder and weirder. And finally, it's going to be so weird that people are going to have to talk about how weird it is. And at that point, novelty theory can come out of the woods uh, because eventually people are going to say, what the hell is going on? It's just too nuts. It's not enough to say it's nuts. You have to explain why it's so nuts.